Adolf Hitler stands as one of the most recognizable and reviled figures in human history. His image is etched into the collective memory of the world, a symbol of tyranny and hatred. His name is synonymous with the horrors of the Holocaust and the devastation of World War II. The atrocities committed under his regime left an indelible mark on humanity. Born in Austria in 1889, Hitler rose from obscurity to become the dictator of Nazi Germany. His early life gave little indication of the dark path he would eventually take. His journey from the fringes of society to the pinnacle of power is a chilling tale of ambition, ideology and manipulation. He masterfully used propaganda to sway the masses and consolidate his control. Hitler's ascent was aided by a complex interplay of factors, including the social and economic turmoil that gripped Germany in the wake of World War I. The nation was in a state of despair and looking for a saviour. The humiliation of defeat coupled with widespread unemployment and inflation created fertile ground for extremist ideologies. The Weimar Republic struggled to maintain stability amidst the chaos. Hitler capitalized on this discontent, skillfully exploiting the anxieties and resentments of the German people. His promises of revival and national pride resonated deeply with a population in crisis. Adolf Hitler's early life was marked by instability and a strained relationship with his father, Alois Hitler, who was known for his authoritarian and often harsh demeanor. Born in the small town of Braunau am Inn, Austria, on April 20th, 1889, Hitler was the fourth of six children, though only two of his siblings survived into adulthood. His father, Alois, was a customs official known for his strict demeanor and demanding nature, which created a tense household environment. Hitler's mother, Clara, was a devout Catholic who showered her son with affection and tried to shield him from his father's temper. Despite his mother's efforts, Hitler's academic performance was unremarkable, often struggling to meet his father's high expectations. He excelled in only a few subjects, displaying a particular interest in history and art, which were his true passions. After his father's death in 1903, Hitler's schoolwork deteriorated significantly and he eventually dropped out of secondary school without graduating, much to his mother's dismay. He spent the following years drifting between Linz, Vienna and Munich, aspiring to become an artist but failing to gain admission to the prestigious Vienna Academy of Fine Arts, a rejection that deeply affected him. Hitler's formative years in Vienna and Munich proved to be crucial in shaping his worldview. He lived among the impoverished and unemployed, witnessing firsthand the social ills that plagued these cities. During this period, Hitler developed a deep-seated anti-Semitism, influenced by the prevalent anti-Jewish sentiment in Vienna at the time. Hitler's worldview was further shaped by his exposure to pan-German nationalism and racist ideologies. He came to believe in the superiority of the German Aryan race and the inferiority of other races, particularly Jews. These beliefs, combined with his growing resentment of the Treaty of Versailles, which he viewed as a humiliating imposition on Germany, laid the foundation for his future political ambitions. The outbreak of World War I in 1914 had a profound impact on Hitler's life. Eager to prove his patriotism, he volunteered for service in the Bavarian army. He served as a dispatch runner on the Western Front, experiencing the horrors of trench warfare firsthand. Despite his relatively low rank, Hitler was awarded the Iron Cross for Bravery, a decoration he wore proudly throughout his life. The war had a transformative effect on Hitler, solidifying his nationalist beliefs and fueling his resentment towards those he held responsible for Germany's defeat. He was deeply affected by Germany's surrender in 1918, viewing it as a betrayal by the civilian government and the Jews, whom he believed had undermined the war effort from within. Section 5. Embracing the German Workers' Party. After the war, Hitler returned to Munich, a city in turmoil. Germany was in the throes of political and economic chaos, and extremist groups were vying for power. In 1919, Hitler joined the German Workers' Party, or DAP, a small right-wing group that shared his nationalist and anti-Semitic views. Hitler's charisma and oratorical skills quickly made him a prominent figure within the DAP. 
He proved to be a gifted public speaker, capable of captivating audiences with his passionate speeches that tapped into their anger and resentment. Recognizing his talent, the party's leaders appointed him head of propaganda in 1920. Section 6. The Beer Hall Putsch, a failed attempt. Under Hitler's leadership, the DAP, now renamed the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or NSDAP, grew rapidly in size and influence. Inspired by Mussolini's successful march on Rome in 1922, Hitler and his followers attempted a similar coup in Munich in November 1923, known as the Beer Hall Putsch. The Putsch proved to be a failure. The Bavarian authorities quickly suppressed the uprising and Hitler was arrested and sentenced to five years in prison for treason. Although the Putsch was a setback for the Nazi party, it brought Hitler national attention and allowed him to portray himself as a martyr for the cause of German nationalism. Section 7, Mein Kampf, a blueprint for power. While imprisoned in Landsberg prison, Hitler dictated his political manifesto, Mein Kampf or My Struggle. In this rambling, hate-filled book, he outlined his racist ideology, his plans for German expansion, and his vision for a totalitarian state ruled by the Nazi party. Mein Kampf became the Bible of the Nazi movement, shaping the party's ideology and providing a blueprint for Hitler's future actions. The book's central themes included the superiority of the Aryan race, the evils of communism and Judaism, and the need for Germany to acquire Lebensraum, the living space in the East at the expense of the Slavic peoples. Section 8 the rise of the Nazi party. After his release from prison in 1924, Hitler rebuilt the Nazi party, exploiting the economic hardship and political instability that gripped Germany during the Great Depression. The party's message of nationalism, anti-Semitism and economic recovery resonated with millions of Germans who were disillusioned with the Weimar Republic. The Nazi party's rise was meteoric. In the 1928 Reichstag elections, the Nazis won only 12 seats. However, by July 1932, they had become the largest party in the Reichstag, winning 230 seats. This surge in popularity was fueled by a combination of factors, including Hitler's charisma, the party's effective propaganda machine, and the widespread fear of communism. Section 9, The Master of Propaganda, Propaganda played a crucial role in Hitler's rise to power, shaping the minds and hearts of millions. The Nazi party, under the leadership of Josef Goebbels, masterfully exploited the power of mass media to disseminate its message and manipulate public opinion. Goebbels, often referred to as the Minister of Propaganda, was a key architect in crafting the Nazi narrative. Rallies, posters, films and radio broadcasts were all used to promote the Nazi ideology and demonize its opponents. These mediums were meticulously controlled to ensure a consistent and persuasive message. Hitler himself was a master of propaganda, understanding its immense potential. He understood the power of imagery and spectacle and he used it to his advantage, creating a powerful and emotive narrative. His rallies were carefully orchestrated events designed to evoke a sense of awe and adulation, leaving a lasting impression on the attendees. His speeches, delivered with passion and conviction, tapped into the anxieties and aspirations of the German people, offering them scapegoats for their problems and a vision of a glorious future under Nazi rule. This manipulation of public sentiment was a cornerstone of the Nazi strategy. Section 10 from Chancellor to Dictator. In January 1933, President Paul von Hindenburg appointed Hitler Chancellor of Germany. Although Hitler had come to power through legal means, he quickly moved to consolidate his power and establish a totalitarian state. Within months, the Nazi party had banned all other political parties, abolished civil liberties, and established a reign of terror. The Enabling Act of 1933 granted Hitler dictatorial powers, effectively dismantling the Weimar Republic and paving the way for the establishment of the Third Reich. With all opposition crushed, Hitler was free to implement his radical agenda, transforming Germany into a totalitarian state and setting the stage for World War II and the Holocaust. Section 11. Conclusion. A Legacy of Tyranny. 
Adolf Hitler's rise to power stands as a chilling reminder of the dangers of extremism, nationalism, and the manipulation of fear and resentment. His reign of terror left an indelible scar on human history, resulting in the deaths of millions and the devastation of Europe. Hitler's legacy continues to haunt the world today, serving as a stark warning against the dangers of intolerance, hatred, and the erosion of democratic values. His rise to power serves as a reminder of the importance of vigilance, education, and the defense of human rights and